What is a barrier? One defined it as a circumstance or obstacle that keeps people or things apart or prevents communication or progress. There is a natural barrier between people who don't know each other. One of the most effective ways to dismantle this barrier is to introduce yourself. Hi, I'm George. Nice to meet you, I'm Kate. In today's Old Testament reading, this is exactly what God does with his people. He gives them his name. You see, when you come across the word Lord in all capital letters in the Bible, this is translated as Yahweh. In other words, Yahweh speaks to Moses and tells him to tell his brother Aaron to bless the people using God's very own name. There is a barrier between a sinful people and God. However, through God placing his name on his people, we will see that this barrier is removed. The entire blessing is rather short, but there is much in it. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. The first part of the blessing states, the Lord bless you and keep you. The high priest Aaron is told to call upon the name of Yahweh to the people that they will be blessed and kept by Yahweh. The barrier between a sinful nation and a holy, perfect God begins to crumble. These people who deserve no such blessing are now being told by God himself, through Aaron, that not only will they be blessed by him, but they will also be guarded, protected, or kept by him. Let's focus on that word bless for a moment. When a newborn comes into the world, we normally say God has blessed us with a child. We might say that God blessed us with a new job or blessed us with a new spouse. But it goes much further than just these things. Everything we have in this life, we owe to the providence of Yahweh himself. We are blessed with the very breath that we breathe, the bodies that we have, our reason, and our senses. One of the biggest blessings we ever received was in our baptism. Here, we also receive the blessing of God's name and received the Holy Spirit. Yet we are even blessed in our struggles. Do you struggle in this world? Do you find that you are looked down upon by others because of your faith? Do you find it difficult to read your Bible daily or to catechize your children regularly? The devil is on the prowl. And your own sinful nature battles with the Holy Spirit constantly. The struggle is real. However, the second part of this first blessing is real too. Yahweh will keep you. Keep here means to guard, to protect, to make his own. There's a popular Bible verse in Romans 8.31. If God is for us, who can be against? This should be a comfort to us. In our daily struggles, we have this blessing that God will protect us, will guide us, will keep us. We will be reciting the Lord's Prayer soon. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. These are ways that God keeps us. Another way of putting it is that the barrier of sin that keeps us from God is being taken care of by God himself. The second part of the blessing states the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. God who has just blessed us with his name and promises to keep us now states that he will make his face shine upon us. The barrier continues 
to crumble. Think back to when Moses went up the mountain to receive the law from God. He came back glowing white from being in God's presence. Or when Moses and Elijah with Jesus on the mount and in their glory were emblazoned in white. In this second part of the promise, Yahweh promises to shine his face upon you. He promises to deliver his glory to you. Folks, the priest, when he delivers this blessing, is delivering it to a sinful people. The same is true for today. When Pastor Thompson delivers this blessing near the end of the service, he delivers it to people that deserve not only temporal, but eternal punishment. This is what we all deserve. However, God promises to shine his face upon you and to be gracious unto you. This is grace, my friends. Free and unmerited favor from Yahweh himself. But how can we make sure that we receive this, you ask? First of all, it has already been given to you in your baptism. The Holy Spirit dwells in you. Anytime a good work comes from you, you can look to the Holy Spirit and give him credit for doing that work. The answer to the question, how could we make sure that we receive this, is you can't by your own works. Our assurance is in the promise of God and his works, but also our assurance is in our baptism when we received God by having the Holy Spirit dwell in us. These are the promises from Yahweh to you. The barrier between us and him is crumbling indeed. The third part of the blessing states, the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. To understand what it means for Yahweh to lift his countenance upon us, we sometimes need to see what it means when he hides his countenance or face from someone. In Deuteronomy 31, verse 17, it states, then my anger will be kindled against them in that day, and I will forsake them and hide my face from them, and they will be devoured. And many evils and troubles will come upon them, so that they will say in that day, have not these evils come upon us, because our God is not among us. When God's face is turned away, nothing good can come of it. Therefore, when he lifts his countenance upon us, what he is promising is that he will be among us. This is the peace that this blessing is really speaking of. The peace we all should know from our baptism when we were baptized in the single name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Just as God gave his people his name as a blessing through this Aaronic benediction, God gave us his name in baptism, and the Holy Spirit dwells within us. The last sentence God speaks to Moses is this. So shall they put my name upon the people of Israel, and I will bless them. God will bless them. Bless them. Friends, we are the new Israel a holy and chosen race, a royal priesthood. He blesses us and will continue to do so because of his promises to us. The promises given through Aaron in these words, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance and give you peace. These have been ultimately fulfilled in the work of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the name given him by the angel before he was conceived, as we read in our gospel today. His name, Jesus, or in Hebrew, Yeshua, literally means Yahweh is salvation. How does it, a sinful people attain salvation? 
the barrier of sin must be removed. Just as the cloth curtain of the Holy of Holies was torn in two, so our barrier of sin is torn away as well. However, this barrier of sin cannot be removed by the sinful. It can only be removed by Yahweh himself. This barrier has been destroyed when Jesus walked up that hill with the cross weighing him down. It has been destroyed when the nails were being hammered into his flesh. It has been destroyed when he took his last breath. And that barrier between us, a sinful people, and God has been destroyed when Jesus was resurrected. You see, the barrier all along between us and God has always been our sin. Our sin has kept us from having a right relationship with God. Yet through God and only by God has that barrier been removed. It was removed by the redemptive act of Jesus Christ. Yahweh is salvation. Through his work, he blesses you. He keeps you. His face shines upon you and is gracious to you. And he is the sole provider of your peace. This, my friends, is what the third line, give you peace, truly is about. This is the peace which surpasses all understanding. This is the peace that allows us to face those struggles day by day, knowing full well that our God has tossed away the barrier between us and him. I started off this sermon saying there is a natural barrier between people who don't know each other. God gave us his name, Yahweh. We can call upon him in all of our struggles. We can call upon him for supplication. We can call upon him to offer thanks and praise. In other words, even though we are sinners, we, because of Jesus Christ's work on the cross, are also saints. You may have heard the phrase in Latin, simul justus et peccator, which means simultaneously righteous and sinner. Because of his work, we now know God and can call upon his name. Several verses share this idea and many more. Psalm 105. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. Psalm 86. For you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive and abundant in loving kindness to all who call upon his name. Psalm 116, because he has inclined his ear to me, therefore I shall call upon him as long as I live. And Romans 10, 13, everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Because God has placed his blessing on us, because God has given us his name, because of his work on the cross, only then have we been able to call upon the name of the Lord. It is not an act we do, but an act that God allows us to do, and that the barrier will be removed forever. We owe all that we have and all that we will have to God and to God alone because of his gracious blessings and promises. Lord, we call upon you and your name and humbly give you thanks. Amen.